This is a demonstration of Hitachi Data Systems Dynamic Tiering HDT. We will create an HDP pool, the Hitachi Dynamic Provisioning Pool, and we will enable dynamic tiering on that pool. We will create the pool with two tiers of storage, a SAS tier and a SATA tier. Now to create an HTT pool, under our pools view, we will select create pools to launch our pool creation wizard. We can choose a pool type of dynamic provisioning or copy on write. We'll choose DP. We can enable a multi-tier pool for HDT or choose disable for a traditional HDP pool. We will select our backing LDEVs for our pool. We will select a SAS LDEV of 10 gig and a SATA LDEV of 20 gig. The first LDEV chosen will be designated as the top LDEV. The top LDEV incurs some pool overhead. We can view which LDEV is selected to be the top of the pool and we can choose another if we like and select change top pool ball. So we'll leave it as our SAS LDEV and we'll click OK. Now we can name our pool. We can give it a character name and a number. We'll leave our initial pool ID set to zero. We'll choose auto tier management and we'll change the cycle time from the default of 24 hours to one hour for testing purposes. Under the 24 hour cycle time you would want to choose a monitoring period that excluded backups and, under, and other undesirable I.O. Now if we click Next we'll have the opportunity to create some LDEVs out of our pool. Our pool is selected by default so we'll create our first LDEV of 5 gig and give it a, a name of Vol1. As we create these LDEVs, we have the opportunity to select a different CU and starting device number if we choose. We'll leave it at CU0, device 0. We already have a device 0, so the first will come in as device 1. For subsequent LDEVs that we create, we must select the pool each time. So we'll select our pool again, we'll create our second LDEV, and we'll choose 6 gig for this LDEV so that it's easily distinguished on our test host. Once we're finished creating our LDEVs, we can choose finish if we'd like to stop at that point or we have the opportunity to go as far as mapping those LDEVs directly to our host. So as we finish, we'll progress through the wizard by choosing Next, and we'll have the opportunity to select these LDEVs and map them to our host. So as we can see, our LDEVs are already selected. We have available our backing LDEVs for our pool which we cannot select those LDEVs because they'll be utilized by the pool. Now we have the ability to select our test host Matthew. So we'll select Matthew on CL1A and CL2A. As we choose next, we'll be able to preview the LUN numbers that will present these LDEVs. We can check the boxes if we like and change the LUN numbering by selecting change LUN IDs at the bottom right. We'll leave them at 0, 1, and 2. So as we click finish, we can preview all of the operations that the wizard will perform. So we'll create a pool, create three LDEVs from the pool and map those LDEVs to our test host Matthew. Now as we click apply, we'll start the task. 
under the task list we can click on our task to see details about our task so our task as we can see is firstly creating a pool the rate level and drive type is mixed so it's a a, a dynamic tiering type pool our tier management is auto we're creating three LDEVs in our pool and we're mapping those LDEVs to our host Matthew as LUN 0, 1, and 2. Now this process will take a few minutes. Now that we've created our pool, we'll populate our three volumes with static data from our test host. We'll begin by populating 3 gig of static data in volume 1, next volume 2, and finally volume 3. Afterward, we'll have a look at our tier properties and determine by volume which tier our data resides. We'll have a look at our tier utilization after copying our initial static data. We copy 3 gig of static data into vol 1, 2, and 3 in that order. So we'll have a look at vol 1 to see where the data resides for vol 1. We'd expect that data to be in tier 1 as it is. So all of vol 1's data is in tier 1. Vol 2, we'll look at vol 2. And vol 2 appears to have filled tier 1 and spilled over into tier 2. So we would expect vol 3 to have all of its data in tier 2, as it does. So now we'll have a look at utilization from the pool perspective. So we'll select the pool, view tier properties from here. And we would expect to see tier one pretty full. And it is 98% full with tier 2 around 20% for the remaining capacity. After viewing our tier properties, we can see that our 3 gig of static data from volume 1 resides in tier 1. Our 3 gig of static data from volume 2 finished filling tier 1 and spilled over into tier 2. 3 gig of static data from volume 3 continued filling tier 2. Now we will use iometer to create a 1 gig active data file on volumes 1 and 2 and a 2 gig active data file on volume 3. These data files will be exercised at a low, medium, and high rate of access. These data files, when created, will fall into Tier 2 since Tier 1 is completely full. Now that we've exercised our active data files for approximately two hours, we've spanned two one-hour HTT optimization cycles. We can see here that our Volume 1 and Volume 2 has a use capacity of about 4 gig, 3 gig of our initial static data, plus 1 gig files created by iometer for our active data. Vol 3, in turn, has 3 gig of static data and a 2 gig of active data. We exercised Vol 1 at a medium rate, Vol 2 at a low rate, and vol 3 at a high rate. We'll have a look at vol 1 properties and get an understanding of where our data resides 
at this point. So we can see that about 672 mag reside in tier 1 and the remainder in tier 2. We had a 1 gig file that we exercised at a medium rate and so we can see that we have just under 1 gig that was exercised around the 10,000 IO per hour rate. All the data to the right in the graph is exercised at a lower rate. Now we'll have a look at vol 2 with the low access rate. We'll see where that resides. So vol 2 does not have any data in tier 1, all data residing in tier 2. At a very low I.O. rate per hour, therefore none of its data resides in tier 1. Now for vol 3, vol 3 had 2 gig of highly accessed data and 3 gig of static data. Vol 3, the highly accessed data is in Tier 1 and the static data in Tier 2. We can see by the graph that approximately 2 gig of data is accessed at the rate of 10,000 I.O. per hour or greater. Now we'll have a look at our tier as a whole. We'll view tier properties for our pool and we can see that we have a little under 3 gig in tier 1 and approximately 11 gig in tier 2. We can see the 10,000 I.O. mark we have our tier 1 range I.O. per hour greater than 10,000 resides in tier 1 and lower resides in tier 2. Now we can see that our static data has been moved down to tier 2 whereas our highly active data has been moved up into tier 1. So after two cycles of HDT optimization, we see that our more active data has been moved into tier 1 and our less active and static data has been moved into tier 2. So HDT performed optimization to put the most active data in the more expensive SAS tier and less active data in the larger SATA tier.